library building was built over many years. It's an Italian Renaissance revival style. When it was built, it was placed here, symbolically, I think, on the oval. It's the only building that's really on the oval grounds. It didn't take long for the campus to realize they built it too small. And so, with, after many decades, in 1950, the, they completed the Stax Tower, which became additional space for book collections. There were renovations in the 1970s, but at the turn of the century, people realized the library needed a major overhaul. Well, prior to the renovation, which began in the fall of 2006, this building no way met the aspirations for The Ohio State University. It was avoided on all campus tours. It was far from being a spotlight. The building was often described as tired. The facility became a symbol for deferred maintenance, but after the 2009 renovation, it became a, a point of pride for the, for the university. And I think it was a dramatic change because of how thoughtfully the architects and planners listened to the client. One of the major concerns was the wood paneling throughout the library. When it was built in 1907, white oak was what was used for the doors, the bookcases, the stacks were all white oak. When I met with Mr. Acock and he asked of the story of the white oak and where it came from and, and how it was important for him to um, continue the tradition of, of quarter sawn white oak in, in this library, I told him we would make it happen. The buildings, as you may know, go from the most historic building on the east to the newest building, the lens we call it, on the west. And as you flow through the building, you kind of get a feel for that historic to the more contemporary uh, current design. One of the most unique features about the woodwork that's here is that the material was harvested and processed with the finished product in mind. The State Forest grew the best timber, best white oak in the, in the world, and I knew that the State Forest would also be giving back to the local communities if we purchased a track of timber. I think the white oak in the library sets off the design of the library very well. It's a renewable resource, and as long as we manage the resource properly, you know, we have trees for years to come. There's something very human and very warm uh, about a white, white oak. The goal was to highlight uh, this spectacular vision of the architects and how they were going to continue with the rest of the, the renovation. Where did this passion for the library and design come from? My mother was an art teacher. She taught me how to paint, and how to sketch in charcoal and that's what I did when I was five years old and kind of stayed with me. And then when I went to uh, Ohio State, you, you had to design your building and then present it. I just loved doing that. Yeah, this room has been a symbol of this library facility for since 1913 when it opened. And with the renovation of the library, this room took on a special significance as a symbol. And everything was replaced in this room. The plaster lovingly restored by the same plastering firm, Pimer, that did the original plaster work in 1913. It was a great experience, working with the people and the librarians and the whole attitude about it what the library was and what it was going to be in the future. Anytime you find in yourself that moment where you know you can make a difference, that moment where you can give back, it's um, not only the most rewarding experience um, that you can have, but it's probably one of the most enlightening experiences. Mm -hmm.